Hello, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby. Uh, today we're going to talk about my Gapster uh, D11 DAC. It's a project that took a few months uh, to build. Uh, if you haven't seen all my other videos, I'll put a link uh, for them below. This video is going to be the long one. If you want the shorter version, there's a link below. Uh, click on that one. It's been an amazing journey and we came up with a beautiful, beautiful and great sounding DAC. It comes into two uh, portions. This is the power supply portion and this is the main uh, DAC portion. We're going to show you from the very beginning how it all started and all the parts that's been used. There'll be links for them below and uh, we're going to put it all together. Uh, if you guys have not built anything like this before, please don't start with ultra capacitors. Start with something simpler because they could be very dangerous to so do this at your own risk and make sure you do your homework before. Uh, if you guys like my channel, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. A little click goes a long way. A little like will help as well. Keeps the algorithm and keeps my channel uh, going. Um, going to uh, start from the very beginning. And uh, so we're gonna not waste too much time. So let's get there and let's build this thing together. So what makes this DAC uh, special? A uh, few things. Uh, first, it has the shortest pass from the digital to the analog. Uh, second, it runs on ultra capacitors, the best power supply worldwide right now. Because technology has improved so well with ultra capacitors that you can actually store quite a bit of energy in them. Not huge, but enough to run a DAC like this for quite some time because it uses very little energy. And the other thing is a lot of shielding. Everything is being shielded, uh, Raspberry Pi shielded, FIFO Pi shielded, the clocks are shielded, then they're all shielded again. So there's many, many layers of shielding. It also have a state-of-the-art separate power supply, complete separation from the DAC unit. Also, it boosts some amazing uh, medical grade transformers that are extremely low noise with separate windings for each part of the desk. So for those of you that are interested in uh, the core of the system, what's it actually really made of? So I'm just gonna go through it here in pretty good detail. So this is a station pie. All the links are below, of course. So this is a station pie and uh, what you do is you get your uh, Raspberry Pi. This is a three, uh, 3B, I believe. And uh, it's just one will go on this side. So on the other side of the uh, station Pi, we are going to plug in the, uh, the 54Q7. This is probably the most important part. It's gonna isolate the noisy computer-based Raspberry Pi and get all the uh, music reclocked with the least jitter possible and uh, this is going to go on the cleaner side so it's going to go on this side and then we're going to put a couple standoffs here for them there we go they're all four in there the copper shields are insulated on the inside with electrical tape so you don't get two types of metal touching each other and causing any galvanic problems. I put an extender on the uh, GPIO, let's just uh, zoom in on that. So right here you'll see it's just a little extension so it's a little bit higher uh, pins. It also has a little sponge and a dampening thing, so it just holds the, hold them tight in place so they don't vibrate and because you don't want those clocks to be moving on any vibrations when you crank the music up and the bass is rattling. You want to make sure that all that is, uh, is pretty solid as can be. So next on top we're going to put the uh, dual mono DAC. Uh, uh, the reason we have a dual version is because we would like to run a uh, balanced output and that's the best way to go. And uh, these are basically uh, 
the Sabre chips uh, 1938. And uh, the, what's most important is not the chip, is how you uh, basically implement it and how do you get the output out of it. And in our case, we are gonna, f this is a stripped down version. It's got the least amount of components possible, just a strict conversion. And we're gonna feed it with the best power supply. And also the output is we're gonna be using a passive uh, transformer output. And you're gonna get the shortest, least complicated uh, output possible. And that's gonna give you the best sound you can get. And so that's going to go on top of all that. So flip that around so that goes right in here. And that's going to go right here. I'll put some screws to lock these out. I'm not going to bore you. There is a clock, um, master clock link from here to the DAC. And that is going to go right in here. It's a super short cable. And that's pretty much it. On top of this, we're going to get the, uh, the uh, transformers, four transformers. And these are going to go, there's a little, uh, basically a connector here. That's going to go in here and that's going to go out. After listening uh, to the Acrosilicons and the Crystec 957s, I decided to go with the Christac. I felt the sound was a little bit more open and uh, sounded better to me, at least on my system. One problem I noticed with the, uh, with the board is when you take the, uh, when you take the clocks in and out, there are very little resistance. They seem to like go in loose almost. And they're, they're barely, they're barely connecting in there. And I found that little a little weird, and uh, uh, they should have like a much nicer firm. Like they should like really click like properly, have some good grip to get a good contact. I found that a little bit loose. So I noticed the same with the acrosilicon clock also was loose. So I'm, I'll be more saying that the the sockets are probably could be a little bit better grade. Uh, so needless to say, I'm going to solder my clocks on the board. So I'm going to take the sockets completely out and solder them. I'm pretty happy with them right now. And if I have to take them out, it's easy for me to desolder them. It won't take much time. But this way we'll get the best connection uh, possible. Once I finished soldering the clocks, I uh, did uh, two special shields around each clock. A, to separate the clocks from each other. The clocks on, on their own can, be no can produce noise and you don't want to one to affect the other one. Also, uh, it creates additional shielding against the uh, rest of the board and uh, from uh, other interferences as well. Uh, it's just a little added layer. It's an optional thing. You don't have to do this, but uh, that's where I uh, decided. I uh, wrapped it with uh, electrical tape just to avoid any accidental contact. Make sure there's enough clearance between it and all the components underneath. You don't want to short anything because that's another uh, critical point. Another thing, I upgraded the um, the connector uh, using 12 and 14 gauge wires it's hard to get into those tiny little little things they are good to a certain degree but uh, not big enough for the big uh, big wires ultimately i would like to solder all the uh, electrical connections that would be the best uh, the best joint possible but for now <laughs> i keep taking them out and then they're still not stable and I'm going to leave that till really, really long down the road even. I'm not sure if I'll ever do that, but uh, it's another option. This is going to go sit in a case. By the way, underneath we have some, uh, some nice uh, dampening uh, uh, feet. The little feet are made out of sorbosane material. There's six of them here. And they're going to be providing some damping. It'll, all this to keep the clocks from any possible vibrations and also the rest of the system. And that's going to go in here. And, uh, and then this 
will go on top here and it's going to plug into there and that's going to go like this so everything is encapsulated in here and to keep all the noise away on the other side where the real noise is from the uh, raspberry pi this another shield here is going to go on top of the whole thing basically and that's going to go right right in here and this goes like this so now you have a double shielding system on top of the bigger shield outside as well so all these will pretty much reduce all the noise to the uh, least amount possible so this is the actual core system and uh, the four transformers are pretty amazing they're actually very high quality transformers and uh, so uh, we're going to basically put that in and then we're going to start adding all the power supply so this answers the question to everybody that wants to see like what's what is the core system running on so that that gives you a fairly uh, good idea all the links are below and you can uh, check them out and uh, from there you can go into all the uh, pdf documents and check all the manuals on each each component so we have the case here and we're going to start putting all the stuff in it so this is the main core system so this goes right in there and then we've got all the ultra capacitors so these guys have been drained one two oh, i got them all this time number four number five and then we have the uh, linear pi this is going to supply basically the uh, power for the raspberry pi so we got all the holes done here so uh, we're going to start mounting all the parts so here it is i got all the uh, ultra capacitors in place five of them here you can i'm um, just gonna zoom in on the extra shielding i've got uh, you can see before i cover it up so this is uh, over the fifo pi and the clocks there's another uh, big copper shield that covers the whole thing the copper does not touch any of the other metals so there should be no galvanic issue here and uh, that's gonna be the attack portion so this is the uh, relay system that's gonna power the uh, VU meter here you can see uh, that I'm designing the faceplate of the DAC and that makes it a lot easier to actually visualize it before you start cutting things I designed the uh, face uh, template for the uh, VU meter and uh, then I printed it on transparency paper and uh, cut it and put it into uh, and replaced the original uh, VU meter uh, faceplate. All right, just inserting the. After cutting about six or seven of them, I finally got a good one. It's very precise. It's Quite a few little cutouts that you have to be exact, but it seems to work fine. All right, here it is with the uh, lit from the back. All right, so here we go. We got quite a few things done. So this is the relay system for the VU meter. Uh, got some nice uh, walnut wood. We're going to use that to uh, build uh, the D11 uh, DAC and that's the piece that I just cut here we go things are starting to take shape so we've got this uh, building all the wood here we already almost finished i already almost finished the uh the front this will go here and this will piece will go in here as you notice so it's open in the middle 
and there's gonna be a piece of glass that's gonna go right right in here this goes here so here you can see the uh, power supply in it it's pretty much finished finally it took a very long time and got very complicated I am not gonna talk a lot about the power supply because I have a whole video dedicated to it so uh, there's a link below about it if you want to know more about it. I just want to mention briefly in here because it is a primary uh, important part of this project. All right, so I decided to mill my own uh, volume knob from a solid uh, piece of brass. I'm gonna use that on my lathe and we're just gonna cut a slice and shape it into a beautiful piece and put a hole in it and all that. I think we'll make a nice uh, volume knob out of it. And Just going to drill a hole into it now. There we go. So this looks much nice and flat on all sides. So now we can we can either polish it or we could leave the lines, so it depends on the look we would like. I kind of like the lines actually, so I might just leave them. I uh, decided to do another one, much a little bit smaller, because I found the other one was a bit way too big. After all, it is a DAC and this is not an amplifier, so, uh, so we're doing a little smaller version of the other one. I just did the face and the top, so we're just going to cut it. Here it is, this is the smaller version, same thing, just gonna finish the other side, just cut this side, we're gonna finish it and put a hole in it. So I've got the uh, display here, it's going to go at the front and uh, we, it's going to be outside the, the chassis and it's going to have, a, it's going to be basically double insulated so it's going to have another insulation here to keep it away from the rest of the stuff. Okay, all the screws are mounted. Oh, here it is. It's, you know, so that's a. So, make just finishing up the uh, network uh, connection here. So this is just a straight through, so you can connect the cable from here. And this connects back here. And this is going to connect with the Raspberry Pi here. And it's going to go down here. Just like that. I'm going to do a little extension for the uh, micro SD slot. Uh, so, because it's encased into the box, it's hard to, if you want to change something or something. You want to redo the card, it's, you need to have access to it. So this is an extension for the, uh, for the card. Uh, this plugs into where the card usually goes and that's the extension. It's got a little box. So we're going to put this uh, somewhere here. So we're just going to cover everything so you don't want uh, metal dust to go onto your components. That's going to go in here. Some earplugs, some shades.
Okay, so we got the uh, micro SD uh, card working here. We got the network cable plugged in. So uh, we're going to put a couple XLRs here, left and right. When you're uh, installing the RCA cable, I'm trying to install those here, uh, it's very important to pay attention that those little plastic things, that those little rings that come with it, uh, there's two ways you can mount it. You can mount it in a way where the ground is actually connecting to the chassis and that's when you're actually uh, connecting your signal to the ground. So you're grounding your signal and that's sometimes good, sometimes it's not good. In our case, we do not want to ground the signal. So we do not want signal ground. So uh, there's a special way to mount the plastic, so make sure you pay attention. I'm going to get you a little close up and uh, to do that. But just a quick grounding thing, there's different grounds. So you've got chassis ground, you have signal ground, means your inputs and outputs, if they're grounded or not. And you have power ground, like whether your DC voltage, the plus and the negative, if the negative is actually grounded as well. So there's three types of ground that you need to pay attention to and it gets pretty confusing what should you ground what's not to ground and it's really there's no rule of thumb this is a very gray area not too many people talk about it and it's quite complicated and the best thing to do is to maybe listen to what you'd like to do something everybody agrees on is that the chassis should be grounded so chassis ground is is a given uh, signal ground is uh, probably the least uh, done. You don't see it very often, but some components have the signal grounded and some not. And that makes a huge problem when you're mixing components. If one has a grounded signal, the other one doesn't. Now you're getting, you grounded the other component and that could cause hum, could cause problems. And these are some things that people don't talk about, especially when you're mixing different brands and different components. So pay attention to, to that. I'm going to get you a little close up. I'm going to look at the two different ways of connecting the, uh, the RCA uh, jacks here. Okay, so if you look at this carefully, uh, there's two types of plastic pieces. One has a little lip on it and the one that has a tiny lip on it it's designed so when you put it in that the negative of the RCA does not touch the, the chassis and also then you put the on the other side you are going to put in the other plastic uh, component so so basically you're going to put one plastic and one plastic and the little lip is going to isolate it and then you put your copper stuff. If you want to have signal ground then you take the one with the lip out and uh, so that's the one with the lip and you put the one that has no lip and uh, so you can put it or even don't put any plastic at all if you want. So you could just go straight like this and now that it's touching on the other side you would put your copper or gold plated piece as well so now the signal is touching on both sides and this is grounded so that's one way to do it in our way we're not gonna signal uh, ground the signal so we're gonna put the one with the little lip on it and that's gonna go in here on the other side first goes the other little plastic ring that's going to go on the other side and then you're going to put all your copper things so basically uh, none of those are touching the chassis so this is an example of two RCA plugged in one the signal is not grounded and one is grounded. This one not grounded. It's just the way you mount them. So pay attention to the way you mount them because you really do not want to make that mistake. So anytime you're chaining RCA plug on, on a component, make sure do I want the signal grounded 
or not grounded. So I'm going to redo this one too in a way so that it is not grounded. Okay, so I redid the, this one, so now it's no longer touching. See, that's uh, oh, here you go. so that's connected, not connected, not connected. So the signal is not grounded. So why we don't want to ground the signal? So a lot of people will ask. Is uh, uh, in some case, if the component when you go through all this extensive work trying to get all this DC power. Uh, from uh, from ultra capacitors and you're trying to get this pure power and then you want to introduce the ground I mean if you're the only one living on this planet yes that's a great idea but if you look at all the pollution on the ground the ground is probably not your greatest thing you want to introduce into your component uh, for any hi-fi system so you want to stay away from from the ground but you have to ground the chassis but don't ground your signal and, uh, and that's how I, I look at it so it's pretty important uh, not to ground the signal but sometimes you gotta look depends on the how noisy your environment is and you could also try with grounding it and without grounding it on my other system I made a little switch and I did a little A-B test with ground, without ground and start listening to things and I preferred without ground. You could also measure and to see what's your ground is, is it introducing some uh, extra noise or not. So in this case we are not grounding this, the, the, the signal. So this is the uh, relay system that's going to power the uh, VU meter. So we have uh, five ultra capacitors. Each time an ultra capacitor is running uh, on pure mode, means it's not connected anyway to the grid. It's going to send a signal that it's in pure mode, and that signal will be sent to the relay. And uh, so uh, we have five ultra capacitors. We have here five relays. Uh, don't worry about this one. I run a relay, so I use a slightly bigger one. Uh, so this is running in uh, uh, complete isolation mode, uh, so into an optocoupler mode. So what happens is when you get this one, uh, there's a pin here, there's a jumper that connects uh, VCC to JVCC and uh, to the JDVCC, I mean. So you take the jumper out. Once you take the jumper out, then it becomes isolated. Uh, on top of that, because it's a six relay in this case, uh, well, I took one out, so it's five, and uh, each uh, optocoupler, uh, the VCC is connected together. So uh, what I did is I uh, removed R1 uh, right here, that's been removed, R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. These were all uh, uh, taken out. And uh, so we took all, so this way those are no longer connected together so to the VCC. So in that case I ran separate VCC for each one of them. If you don't want to do this, you can get five individual ones and you don't have to run into that problem. But because they're all on the same board, they're all sharing the same VCC. So I had to separate them. I do not want any of the ultra capacitors linked in any way together. So we, are, we want complete separation. Uh, when we feed uh, the uh, sensors here, we're going to put a little, probably one K resistor just to reduce the load. The other side we have uh, so each time uh, an ultra capacitor sends a signal, the relay turns on and that clicks in and it's going to send, uh, so there's five resistors. So each time a relay goes on, it increases the, uh, the uh, power that's sent to the VU meter and this way it gets, starts to go higher and higher, so 20%, 40, 60, 80 and 100. And, uh, these are ended up being 56k uh, resistors and uh, so there are 56k resistors, uh, five of them. Uh, so basically you're running 56k in parallel, so two, three, four, five, and the more you put in parallel the more uh, 
uh, voltage and uh, that's going to go into the VU meter. And so that's for that. On the back, uh, just to simplify the system, we ran the ground to here. That's going to supply the ground to the VU meter. And the plus is just basically connecting all the uh, uh, the relays, the center relay pin. It's connecting them all together and it's been sent to the plus of the uh, power. So, so we got negative here and then the plus goes into the relays and each time a relay goes on it gets more and more power as the resistor load gets uh, smaller and smaller. We're starting to see some uh, wiring happening here. I ran all the wires from each ultracapacitor to the relay system that's going to support the uh, VU meter. So I finished uh, wiring the uh, most of it here so you can see there. I'm just going to give you a little tour here. I still have to wire the uh, all the 12 volt power supplies for each ultra capacitor so that's going to be the next part and also we need to wire all the uh, main core subsystem here all right so here we can see this is the relay system with all the uh, wires that are coming from the led uh, for the power pure sensor and uh, Next, we're going to work on uh, all the 12 volt uh, wires here. Each one of them come to the power supply to each unit. There's one on each one of them to here. All right, so here we go. We got quite a few things done. So this is the relay system for the VU meter. So making more progress here. Uh, We've got quite a bit of done or some of the wiring done. I'm now doing some of the heavy uh, duty wiring. This is the wiring that's going to go from the batteries to the uh, to the uh, FIFO Pi and the uh, DAC unit here. And uh, so these I'm using actually uh, this is uh, using it's a 12 gauge uh, silver silver wire and uh, pure silver wire and uh, it's using as short distances as possible uh, some of them are super short like the FIFO Pi is a very short one and same with the uh, the other 5 volt supply for the FIFO Pi it needs to 15.5 sorry 1 5 volt I mean and one is 3.3 uh, so we kept those as short as possible and the DAC a tiny bit longer but still fairly fairly short they're you know about eight inches long I would say and they're you know it's a very uh, 12 gauge uh, silver wire it's pretty good uh, there's two strains of thoughts here the best way would be to solder them straight from one unit to the other I might do that later on once everything is running and I feel good about the system but if you want to be able to you know say you want to upgrade something or change one board or change few things it's easier to just screw them to the unit it's not the best connection but it's the second best uh, these are very heavy duty terminals this is not your uh, they're very heavy duty terminals and, and they're fairly strong uh, so uh, they're they, they, they are all right also there is a fuse here on the UC Pure if you eliminate the fuse you'll reduce the resistance as well a little bit more but I want to play it safe um, you know when you have such huge capacitors you don't you're a little short somewhere and you've got a fire so uh, for the sake of you know 0.1 percent of improvement uh, I'm not gonna go there I, I prefer to have the safety part so um, so that's where it is for now later on down the road if we feel like the system is running beautifully i might uh i wouldn't probably take the fuse out but i might solder the joint straight from the uh either from the terminal or straight from the batteries uh we'll, we'll have to see uh, but 
I'm more of a leniency to tendency to keep it uh, screwed to the terminals. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, the wiring done. So I'm going to keep going here. Uh, so we've got, uh, so where is the five outer capacitor going? Some people might be wondering. So, so you have the DAC. The DAC has three, uh, three, three point three uh, volts uh, individual ones. So we're gonna, that's three of them right there. And uh, the five four pi has two. One is five volt and one is three point three. And that leaves you with the Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi goes into a, a linear Pi here with another bank of ultra capacitors. Um, this is a UC conditioner. And that's going to supply uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi. This runs constantly uh, all the time versus the ultra capacitor is completely disengaged from any supply voltage from outside and they're running on a pure uh, ultra capacitor supply, except for the odd two, three minutes every few hours. And uh, so, yeah, uh, the display will be running on the same power as the Raspberry Pi, but it's coming before the bank of ultra capacitors, trying to keep the Raspberry Pi running on a, as pure as possible power from these ultra capacitors. And uh, yeah, so that's how those five. Uh, ultra capacitors, uh, that's where they're going. The other thing is what we're doing is uh, we're going to twist those uh, positive and negative and that will reduce interference and any possible reduce some of the uh, noise that will be coming from the outside. All right, so I'm making uh, quite a bit of progress here. So we've got a lot of the wiring if not all of it actually done. Uh, so this is the uh, cover. It actually uh, flips uh, this way. This is the back of the unit. This is the front, so it flips towards the front. And uh, just a couple cables here that run to the screen and the view meter and the switch and a uh, little display, so they're all there. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and just uh, show you a little bit close up just before I close a couple of things. So let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so uh, here, this is a uh, Raspberry Pi is right here, and that's going to be uh, covered soon. So this is, uh, I'm going to be covering this with uh, this particular cover here. Um, what I did, because I want to cover this and not having to go in again ever, hopefully. So because there is not really much in the Raspberry Pi to tinker around, so it's got a little network cable extension here that goes to here, just a short little guy. And I have a, 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 the SD card, the micro SD card extension. So this comes from here to here. So if I ever want to change uh, software or anything, update, so it goes from here. And there's the, another cable for the display. It runs actually here, it comes out and it's over here. And that's the, uh, that's the cable for the display. The display is on its own separate enclosure outside of this enclosure because that's a very noisy unit and we want to com put it completely out. So it's outside the, the unit on its own and it's got its own casing as you saw earlier uh, before, but you could see it here. It's got a copper casing, but the copper does not touch the aluminum, so there's a little gap there. And so that's separate from this. And uh, so I'm going to uh, cover the, uh, the Raspberry Pi here. So this is going to go over just like that. I just wanted to show you before I close this one. Well, I'm hoping not to have to reopen this Pandora's box ever again. So it's going to go a little bit this way. So make sure we don't kink those fragile cables here. And here it goes. So I just have to screw it from uh, from underneath and, and lock it into place. There you go. There you go. Now it's in. So I'm going to lock that. So the Raspberry Pi is completely sealed and that is a noisy com the noisiest component. So we're going to uh, 
close the lid here carefully. First time we're closing it with everything in place. So it will start like this and it will slide into place. Just make sure nothing is in the way. There we go. All right, so we're going to plug it in for the first time and see if it's going to work. The chances are very slim that it will work the first time. There's always something going wrong. But you never know. I did check all the wiring many times to make sure it's okay, but we're gonna we'll never know till it starts and see if it's all gonna work as designed. Uh, this is a DB15. We're gonna plug that in and push the power button. Okay, DB15 is plugged in. So powering up. That's good. Ah, that's looking good. We didn't see the low voltage, and uh, it's looking good. Looking good, looking good. All right. Oh, 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 I got a low voltage again. Let's see. Hmm. Not sure. Oh, it's kind of flashing. I'll have to wait. I think there's uh, something to do with the ultra capacitor is not fully charged up because they do suck up a lot of juice uh, while they're charging. But at least it's not constant. So I'll give it a bit of time. I think once those ultra capacitors stop sucking up uh, major power then uh, then I think we'll be okay so far so good actually uh, it went away so so far so good all right so uh, the first test didn't go too well I mean it went well but it wasn't perfect so there's a few issues uh, one of them is one of the UC Pure uh, modules was defective. Uh, it wasn't working, and this is the hard part, is you think, oh, you did something wrong, you wired something the wrong way, you keep tinkering and looking, you spend hours looking for the right thing, and then you realize, after I took the board out, I realized it's actually missing a couple parts. So it must have been knocked out either in shipping or most likely in manufacturing. So needless to say, uh, I uh, had to contact Ian to, and he was uh, kind enough, he's going to be sending me uh, uh, replacement boards. That was not an issue, uh, but it's an inconvenience to having to, to wait for it and all that stuff. But uh, another thing is he uh, kept having problems with the ESS controller. Uh, somehow the ribbon wasn't connecting well and, uh, and after tinkering with it and one time I put it in reverse by mistake, boom, it's gone, burnt, I had to order another one. Uh, so that's on my, that's on my part. Uh, the other thing is the, uh, the controller that I built uh, for the, uh, I use those uh, relay module system and I need five of them. So I, I, use, I used a six module and I built it and I put it in and it's malfunctioned. I don't know what was wrong. I mean, I thought I was doing everything right, but things happened. So needless to say, after many hours and many nights, uh, finally I got fed up. And I didn't want to wait to order. I wanted to order some, but with all the uh, holidays and Black Friday and all that, it's going to take at least two weeks to get it. So I figured I'm just going to make my own. At least it will be more reliable. And I did. And it, so far, so good. Uh, looks good. Uh, the other issue is by powering on and off many, many times, the uh, Raspberry Pi had some issues, wasn't running right, uh, wasn't uh, giving a little small hanging up. So anyway, I changed that. So, so here we go. So it's never perfect. So it takes a lot of time, many days and many nights of uh, troubleshooting. Uh, but the good thing is that the design is good, it's going to be good, it's just a matter of just uh, ironing all the kinks. So this is the, uh, the VU meter module, so I built my own. Uh, it took me a little while, but I, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with it, it's much neater and it's all in one package. So this will, uh, so this is, uh, this would be the trigger from the UC Pure. And once it triggers, you could see the VU meter will go up a notch, so 20% roughly. Uh, and if we add the second one, 
There you go, went up to 40% and you get the idea so far till the till it gets till uh, till the end. All right, this is the last moment uh, putting uh, the four transformers. These are uh, by Ivan uh, Ivan Biak and uh, and they are, these are the large, larger edition, they are slightly better, especially in a low frequency, just by a tad. I'm just going to put two screws for now, I'm sure I'll be opening it up again, I have a feeling. <laughs> it's never over sometime, but we're going to test it and see how, okay, here we go, so that's all in place. Okay, so this is it. I think we're ready to uh, listen to some music and enjoy the music and uh, I'll be curious to see how it sounds. After all, that's what it's all about. All right, this is the uh, second uh, full test, if I could say. I've tested all separate components. I've redid my relay module, did my own. I uh, changed the SS controller and uh, change the cable and a uh, couple little things there's some troubleshooting with the raspberry pi as well anyway it seems like it's all going to be working let's see if it's going to happen here we go all right you can watch this this should go all the way to 100 this is booting that's good oh 20 40 good Pastors are charging. So when this thing will reach to 100 means the capacitors are completely disengaged from the grid. There is, uh, they're running on their own. And uh, the SS controller is working. All the lights seems okay. We'll see if our rune is gonna boot here and uh, display uh, that's something. Oh, we're at 80% almost. And we got one more visitor here. Let's have a look, buddy. Uh, this is Rusty. Oh, looking good, looking good. Looking good, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Still at 80%. We've got one ultra capacitor still charging. It'll probably take another 30 seconds or so. So as you can see, this has gone almost to uh, it's at 80 percent now. Just waiting on one more ultra capacitor uh, to fully charge, and that should click into 100. It's playing music. It's displaying in the uh, SS controller here that it's playing. Uh, power supply is looking good, and uh, I'm just gonna give you a quick tour inside. Oh, just just clicked here to a hundred so uh, here it is this is fully fully working so this is still in a in the messy environment here it's a lot of stuff and uh, it's it's a bit it's chaos at its best but hey if it's working that's all we need here's the inside it's still a bit on the messy side so I have to tidy up some of the wires you can see all the ultra capacitors here this is a relay module that i did myself and uh, display this is showing right now it's a hundred percent and this is the ss controller beautiful knob we made display is working and the power supply is working so success woohoo I decided to change the uh, clocks to try the Christec uh, uh, clocks and I ran into problems, things started, wasn't working, I kept the ESS controller, kept flashing, uh, not connecting, I saw it was a cable and I spent a lot of time on the cable, the kicker is sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't and that drove me nuts and I could never find it two, three days later, I also had a couple shorts and uh, you don't want to have shorts with ultra capacitors because I blew up the fuse. Uh, so thank God I did not bypass the fuse. Uh, note to everybody, if you're doing this, keep those fuses in. If you really have to short the fuse, do that when your system has been running really perfectly after you know, a couple months or a couple of weeks or whatever. 
but do not short those uh, fuses. Uh, you need them. And I did not know what's shorting my fuse because it happened a couple times. And a uh, couple of guesses, maybe the wires around the little uh, uh, things start rubbing after a while and uh, they short it because the more you tinker, the more you start taking things apart, the more you're bound to have some problems. Something's going to go wrong, you're going to make a mistake and bad things going to happen. Uh, so, uh, so I couldn't find where the short was and another possibility was I noticed on the uh, FIFO Pi where the, uh, let's show you guys here, I'll just point, so on the FIFO Pi where you're, where the wire goes in here, uh, if it starts rubbing on the metal on the uh, bottom, and that might era erase the, uh, the paint and there's a metal ground plate there and that could cause a short there. They could touch each other from there if there is a little frail in between them. But many things. And so I decided to take it all out and put, like I said put it on my bench and uh, power it from my Siglent generator. I have lots of three different outputs so I can do all the outputs I need. And this is controlled, I can see what's going on and so I revamped everything and made sure there's nothing touching anything. Also another big problem was that the Station Pi, uh, I'm using the regular Station Pi because for my application I don't need the Pro, there is no benefits uh, for my application. So on the Station Pi, if you look on the edge, this is a Pro, but on the regular Station Pi, if you look on the edge, you actually see the two copper plates uh, top and bottom exposed and mine were touching touching the uh, it was pushed all the way and touching the the ground they plate so I don't know if that has something to do with it but that's also something for everybody to to keep uh, an eye on anyway it took me three four days of frustrations so I finally I think I got it working and uh, to call the king. So if you're having trouble, uh, just take it out and look at it carefully closer outside the case because it gets a little bit hard trying to connect everything. Uh, now we're ready to put it back in the unit and give it a try and see if it's going to work this time. So I'm just going to hook up all the wires to the core from all the ultra capacitors once again and hopefully this time we're going to fix all the headaches I've been having. I got the uh, covers on the uh, shield boxes on. Uh, one is for the, uh, for the Pi and this is uh, the core uh, uh, material Pi for Pi and the DAC. And you can see Ivan's uh, big large transformers on top. And uh, I am using uh, I'm trying those uh, Z foil uh, fort uh, resistors. Uh, see how they sound. Uh, I'll give them a try. Uh, Ivan gave me a couple of his, and these were uh, hand rolled by himself. They're actually nice. I like them, but um, I'm just experimenting with different uh, with different options. Um, for those who's interested on uh, those resistors, this is the. Uh, you can freeze here and get the uh, part number and it's from Mauser. They're by Vichy. It's uh, there that foil uh, resistor. It's nice quality uh, resistor. It's supposed to be of a good reputation. So we're going to give that a try and, and see uh, hopefully it powers up again. Okay, I reassembled the uh, ESS controller and uh, the volume control so this is going to be the final touch hopefully so this is going to be a uh, one of the hopefully the last tryout i've had a few already and uh, sometimes it worked but sometimes there's always been some issues one way or another but this volume control here we go Okay, let's try again, see if it works. I enabled uh, the rune and hopefully that 
should solve that display issue. We'll see if this is going to play again. And no, this one is not playing again. Something is, I don't know what's the deal with this guy. I don't know. After spending literally a few days of frustrations getting all the flashing here, uh, the SS controller could not connect to the DAC. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't, and really frustrated. And at the end, I finally, finally discovered by fluke what was wrong, is that if the uh, uh, power for the DAC goes just a fraction of a second before the rest of the FIFO Pi and the other things, it will not connect. It has to be after, by just a split second. This phenomenon did not appear on regular power supplies. Anyway, I finally put a little delay timer, uh, just for a little simple capacitor delay, and just to bring it half a second later, and that really solved the problem. I finally was able to enjoy the music. Now that I've got the DAC kind of somewhat working, uh, time to do some serious testing. And I also have uh, an AB uh, testing box here, so I can hook up different, I'm trying like different four resistors here, and trying to see A, what type of resistor should I use, and B, uh, what size of resistor should I use. And uh, by listening and also uh, checking the signal, that's gonna help me decide on which way uh, to go. I'm also measuring the linearity of the DAC to see from 20 Hz to 20 kHz and to make sure that the level stays the same. Uh, usually with transformers you'll, you will lose a little bit on the low end so you're, you may not have a very linear uh, wave throughout the spectrum. Uh, but if you have really good uh, transformers that should be very reduced to pretty much linear. And we're going to test all that and plot the chart from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and to see if the level stays the same. So all these are going to help us uh, decide on what to use in small components and make some, some decisions. And to make sure that at the end this DAC measures well, not just, uh, uh, not just that sounds good. And uh, ultimately the sound test is, is what we will go for, but also good to back it up with some measurements and to make sure that uh, things are running uh, up, to, up, to, uh, up to snuff. In order to tell if my DAC is really performing well and sound, uh, if it sounds really good, I'm using a, a preamplifier by Macintosh, the C1100, uh, considered one of the, one of the best uh, preamplifiers out there. The Luxman uh, M900U, I love this amplifier. We will do a separate video on this one. And that also considered one of the best amplifiers out there. And uh, of course my GS11 speakers. Uh, when I compared the sound between my Denafrips Terminator and my DAC, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm very, very pleased because I achieved my goal by producing something a little bit better and uh, for a lot less money. And what I like about it is that just the background is so quiet and the, uh, it just has a little bit more air, a little bit better imaging, and it just uh, sounds really, really nice. And uh, uh, is it really blows it out of the water? No, don't let things, uh, those words, uh, fool you. Uh, when you get to this level of high quality DAX, there is no huge differences. The, uh, the, the differences are small and very subtle. Uh, don't expect one DAC to, you know, to outperform the other one by a mile. The, the differences are small. But to produce something to that level and better, for me, that was a great achievement. What, how it all started is a couple of years ago, I wanted to build the best uh, DIY hi-fi system I could and I want to be like the best of the best like one like for example I started building the uh, my GS11 speaker that you see here there's a link of those below and uh, 
they absolutely are amazing. And um, then I built a streamer and I bought a DAC and I uh, bought a few DACs actually and uh, sold a few and I've tried a few from my friends and I finally settled on the uh, Denafrips Terminator for its uh, price value. Uh, I've tried the Corday, the PS Audio and many many others, uh, some expensive ones, some very expensive ones that I bought and sold. Uh, the buying things used is always a great thing because you could try many, many things. And uh, I was disappointed with some of them that cost like 15,000 US and then, I mean, they weren't, you know, it was good, but they weren't like worth that money. And that's why at the end I'm very happy I didn't spend all this time for nothing because now I can actually sell my Denifrips Terminator and be be satisfied. But if I didn't have that DAC, if I didn't have that reference point, I would never know if my DAC is really good or not. Uh, because you need to be able to switch on the fly, like boom, boom, and compare the sound and, 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 and feel on the same system, the same song right away within a second. And uh, that's when you can tell if you have something uh, better or not. I'm very pleased. Uh, it's, it's performing really good. I hope you guys uh, liked this video. If you like to know more about my uh, GS11 speakers, I'm going to put a link in the corner uh, on top because they're truly amazing and there's a beautiful video about them. And if you want to know about the uh, um, how this journey started, I'm going to put a link on the first part of the DAC uh, building. And uh, I hope to see you again. Take care and uh, hopefully we'll see you in another video.